we're finally back in North America, and it's Christian Hartono, the Indonesian rookie in the number 24 machine, who adding a pole to his already spectacular rookie season. Canadians starting second and third, Lucas Knight and Kyle Collins, and it's Knight who's going to get away cleanest. Hartono struggling up through the gears, and he will lose the lead. By the time we hit turn number one, Lag is he trying to go around the outside? That becomes the inside, and he's in the second in the 01 Duluth machine. Granddad Fred Flintstone off the road. He was looking forward to this event, was so, so quick in practice and felt good about the car, but he's got a lot of work to do ahead of him. He's sitting in last at the moment. Hartono pushed back to third on the start there. Fairly clean getaway by uh, the front few drivers at least. Further back, lots of battling. Close call between John Bunnell and Ali Nelson as they headed up through the treacherous S's. It's so, so hard to run side by side through them, even when you have the grip that you do on these brand new tires. And Nelson got into the back of Bunnell. They, they hold it together, though. The 24 already trying to make up lost time. Swaps from the outside to the inside of the 01, going after second position. But he spins the car down into turn number 10, and he will lose at least a dozen or two spots. No damage to that car, just a little bit of damage to his ego, I bet. But, oh man, that's, that's a really disappointing start for that team. That is Calgary native Kip Pitt driving the Hamilton Autosports number 78 for this race. It's his only start in the car for this year and is his first start ever. He's up eight positions from 18th to up into the top 10 on the start, but he's spun off the, no, uh, off the rear of the number 441 of Blake Camphausen. He'll lose all those spots that he gained. He's got a lot of race in front of him, though, a lot of time to put himself through the field and he's got a lot of experience in these sort of cars in the tight driving conditions that you see at the dirt and oval short tracks in Canada and the Pacific Northwest so we'll see how he can do in the Senpico machine. Baskinger and Kaloa Hankins racing side by side up through the S's. Bit of a tricky spot to make a pass but they're making it uh, work side by side for now. Baskinger's going to win out. It's not really a surprise to see either of these guys in the top 10. Baskinger showing yet again why he's one of the best road racers in the series. And Kaloa Hankins is, seems to be consistently battling for top 10s wherever the series heads. A poor qualifying effort for the 73 is Spencer Fullerton, especially for a road course effort. And he gets into the side of the 58. They were three wide going into that corner, and all three of them, Fullerton, McIntyre, and Fitzwater, spun out. Fullerton's going to get the worst of it. A very rare mistake uh, out of Fullerton there. He's delegated to the extreme tail end of the field. Got a lot of work to do there in the Phoenix Motorsports entry. Knight finds himself nearly in the grass out of turn 13 and heading down the straight into the section of the course known as the Stampede. Al Legacy, full throttle through turn 14, full commitment, and he's off the road in turn 15. Lucas Knight back on him, challenging for the lead. What an excellent battle for the lead in the opening few laps. Matt McIntyre way off the track back in turn 16, and Lucas Knight is going to hold on to the position for now. McIntyre's poor exit off of turn 16 means that we now have a gaggle racing for sixth place. Going into turn one, they were three wide there as Blake Camphausen and Baskinger got together. Left and in, into the side of him, and Scott Roush spins behind them. He'll get that car back going. Everyone checks up for a second to let him get himself sorted out, but he'll lose a lot of time in that, and McIntyre, despite running off the course, is going to hold on to that sixth place. Anderson with a very late move through turn 10. I think Camphausen's line caught him off guard, gets into the side of the 441 before spinning up the track into the grass. Luckily, he avoids the gravel trap, otherwise he would have lost a lot more positions. The hard racing between Knight and Al Legacy has brought some more cars into the picture. Kyle Collins into second position, slides by the 01, but runs off the track a bit, and that's going to set him up for a poor run through turn 16. Legacy was all out of shape as well, though. Knight 
breaking away a little bit with that lead. Prudence Littlejohn right on the bumper of the 01 in fourth position. He might be able to get Collins depending on how Lagacy's run into turn one goes. Lagacy's going to hold on to second for now, and Littlejohn has to slip in behind Collins. And Dumian really hounding the nine car, looks to the outside. Davidson checked up into turn 14. I think he was trying to prepare himself for 15 and 16. And that caught out Dumian sleeping. They both went for a quick little spin, and Dumian spanned back onto the racing line. Luckily, there was no one there to hit him. Davidson gives him a little bit of a bump on the way by there. John King would become turn one and two's next victim, closely followed by Christian Hartono going for yet another spin. It's been a rough start for the Indonesian driver. This is not the sort of run he needs to keep himself in the points contention. It may be lap four, but this is a veritable wide heading into turn number three. Henry Williams all out of shape into that corner, gets loose, nearly clips the 59 as he struggles to get that thing turned on the low banking of the bottom of the track there. Loses some momentum, but doesn't lose his car there. And Demir Bejenov, who was right in the middle of it, backs off, gives Hamelin King quite a bit of room, just going for a little bit of uh, pre-damage uh, control, I think. His championship rival, DJ Curtis, is well in front of him, but... In order to finish well, first you have to finish. Just after I talked about Williams keeping his car off of Fitzwater Sr., that happens. Good job. Thanks for making me eat my words there. The top five are nose to tail behind Lucas Knight, but Al Lagasse clearly wants that lead pretty soon. He looked to the right, thought better of it. But here comes Prudence Littlejohn with a huge dive into turn number one. She had a full head of steam heading down the straight into that corner, and she's got it done on the outside. Prudence Littlejohn in her team's home race. Kip Pitt Motorsports, of course, based out of Calgary, is now in the runner-up position. She's going to be trying to run down Lucas Knight. Legacy still challenging the 0-1 on the inside of the corner, but ultimately it's going to be the 31 winning out with some drafting help from Annie Thomas. We already saw Gambit go off, now it's Hamill's turn in the 34. He isn't able to scrub off nearly as much speed and gets into the wall. King follows the 34 off, and the 90 and the 82 might have made some contact there, and they both go spinning off as well. John King already trying to regain positions after his recent spin. Tries to go around the outside of Bunnell. Gets into the grass and nearly clips Angle Ram when he comes back on. What a job by Angle Ram to avoid what would have been a very high speed crash. Kip Pitt probably needs a new pair of long johns as John King is going to slip in behind him there. Oh man, John King all over the place in that 19 machine. He's got it back going relatively stably, but he might have some flat spotting on those tires from that spin. Lucas Knight runs wide in turn 16. He's been having a bit of trouble with that corner exit and Prudence Littlejohn challenging him on the what will become the outside in turn one down the straight. Al Lagasse coming with a run along with Kyle Collins on the bottom. Not going to make it three wide. Luckily, Prudence Littlejohn is going to slip into the lead there as Al Lagasse just barely avoids not getting into the, uh, the eight of Lucas Knight there. Knight trying to power back on the outside, but he's got nowhere to go. He's pinned in a little bit, slips back to the bottom, might try and make a move back on the 31, but no, he, he can't do it. And Prudence Littlejohn to the lead in the Gypsum Express, number 31. Bejenov's going for it. I think he's realized that he's not going to get anywhere being passive out there. He's going for a pass on Anderson, but Anderson gets loose. Through turns one and two, clips Bejenov, and he's in the wall. Bejenov with a lot of rear end damage on that number 13 machine, and that is what he was trying to avoid with the way he was driving a few laps ago. Bejenov going to continue out on the racetrack with the car in its current state. It might be crabbing a little bit, and I'm sure he might be down on straight line speed, but... Can't afford to bring it into the pits and possibly lose some more track position on his championship rival DJ Curtis, who will he will almost certainly lose ground to this round unless Curtis runs into some serious problems. Max Anderson, the next lap, would add himself to the repeat offenders list for this 
turn along with Demax and Piet. And Dumian went off this lap and Henry Williams uh, also went off last lap. Shout out to the Bayshore Heating and Plumbing number 441 of Blake Camphausen. His good runs have been few and far between, but so far he's been doing quite well. He's running in the sixth spot in that car. He's kept it out of trouble and he's currently keeping himself nicely in front of Sylvain LeSavage and Chester Harvey. Curtis finds himself right in the thick of things as well. Acevedo around the outside through 14. He's going to die, make a diving pass into 15. Get in front of Curtis, but he's running wide through 16, and that's going to give the 33 another opportunity at a cutback here. The 07 of Caitlin Sangs up the inside of the 33 as well, and so we're three wide down the straight. Acevedo's going to give up two places there. It might give up a third to Jokey Lethinen into turn number one. Aren't up the inside, making it three wide as Acevedo and Lethinen make some contact there into the corner. Everybody keeps it going in a straight line, and Sang and Curtis still side by side. It would end up being Curtis getting keeping the position off of turn number three. James Shelley, who was just in front of the DJ Curtis Caitlin Sang battle, blew a tire just a couple of corners up the S's. Henrietta Fitzwater gets into the side of him as he struggles to get that car back to pit road. Checks up to let Christian Hartono by Hartono with a big dive on the 61, and things continue to go downhill for the Indonesian pole sitter as he falls victim to yet another spin. Demir Bejenov even going by him in that heavily damaged number 13 car. Lucas Knight still hanging there in second, struggling a little bit to keep up with Prudence Littlejohn, dives it hard in through 15, but again, way, way too far outside in turn 16. Lagacy was on him before they had even exited the corner, and Lagacy did not give him any room to come back on track. Knight into the grass a little bit there. Collins is gonna go by, maybe Thomas as well. Thomas, little loose into turn one, off the curb. Oh, she keeps a hold of it, nice job by the Australian driver there. She won back in Montreal and clearly she's showing her road racing ability again here today. She's gonna lose quite a bit of time on Lucas Knight, might, might be out of drafting range of these top four now. Scott Roush bunny hopped his way into turn number one, clips the curb and this time he'll take an innocent bystander with him, John Gambit out of North Dakota. This will be the closest he'll get to a home race but uh, that's his second trip off into the grass there and uh, things not looking good for the Kellogg's machine so far today. Tire wear beginning to take hold. These drivers nearly a couple of seconds slower than they were before. My God, that was a late dive by Kyle Collins. He was lucky Al Lagas, he was on the ball there and he's gonna end up losing a spot to that. He was going for a pass, but that was ill-timed to say the least. And Lucas Knight's going to get back by him in the eight car. Lucas might be going for two and one, though, and that might give Collins an opportunity to get that spot back into, into third. No, Lucas Knight falls into line behind Legacy. Prudence Littlejohn beginning to break away a little bit from second place. Legacy and Knight are going for it. They're not giving each other any slack at all, but hey, I'm, if they were, would it really be racing? Knight easily slipped into second as Legacy gets very loose and nearly clips Kyle Collins up through the S's. I'm really shocked we haven't seen a crash from all the side-by-side -side action that we've seen in that portion of the racetrack. Well, now it's time to make a strategy call, and I think race one's only made it more complicated. We saw drivers like AJ Green and, and uh, other members in the top 10 go from outside the top 30 into the top 10 by the end of it doing a one-stop, but we saw the winning strategy be the two-stop uh, in race number one. So what are these front runners going to do? Well, Legacy and Thomas have gone for the conservative choice. They're coming in now. They want that fresh rubber. They were already three seconds a lap slower than they were at the beginning. It's only going to get worse. And uh, I think these guys are confident that they can charge their way through that slower traffic. Uh, in the two times that they're going to have to do so to get themselves back into a winning position. The next lap around, Prudence Littlejohn reacts by hitting the number 31 car. The 8 car of Lucas Knight comes in as well, and that leaves Kyle Collins as the only car 
trying to go for the one stop potentially of those top five front runners in the early going. Kyle Collins didn't seem to have the pace to necessarily overtake Prudence Little John, Lucas Knight, or Al Lagasse. He was able to stay with that group, but he had a hard time staying in front of them. So he's going for a different strategy, still trying to get that first win on the year. Chester Harvey way outside of the uh, asphalt inflow there. I think he got a late communication from his team, and that's going to cost him a lot of time out there on the racetrack. His team might have to repair some front-end damage now. He, he got loose and hit the end of the, the pit wall there. Lasavage bails out from the one-stop strategy from second position. Either that or... There, this is an intentional ploy by that team to give him the freshest tires for the last two stints. Only one way to find out, I guess. It would be Derek Hamill, the last one to bail, uh, leaving 11 drivers out there on the racetrack going for the one-stop strategy. Carl and Dumian struggling with the handling of that race car, spins it off in turn number two, gets it into the Coca-Cola wall there, and that'll give him some rear end damage. Sam Curtis off as well. He was doing very... Well, looking for a top five effort, but uh, might have to struggle a little bit more for that. He's going to be able to come back on track not too soon, but he's got some work cut out for him. Up front, it is still the same running order. Prudence Littlejohn, Al Lagasse, Lucas Knight, not for long though. Knight spins it off in turn two, and he's got some rear end damage, and that's a huge disappointment. For the BC native, he was looking for his second win on the year, led many of the opening few laps. At one point this year, he was in the top three in points. That was after his win at Watkins Glen. He's been so strong at the road courses, but a critical mistake there is going to definitely cost him from making up uh, some points and uh, going for the win here today. Eugene DeMax, Zachary Fitzwater Sr., and Brian Fox, three of the 11 one-stop uh, one drivers, have come onto pit road, and it's quite early, only lap 15. They're going to have to go a long way on their second set of tires. Many of these drivers have gotten themselves into incidents, though, so I guess they're just kind of looking for that fresh rubber to get them back into this thing, but uh, they will definitely need to be more careful on this second stint. Prudence Littlejohn carries too much speed into turn 16, and that's going to give Al Lagasse an opportunity at taking the lead for the first time. It's now just these two. No more Lucas Knight in the picture, and I'm sure Al Lagasse might be a little bit happy about that, considering how hard he had to race to keep second position. But now Al Lagasse to the front as they approach more of the slower traffic. Now both of the leaders are stuck. Henry Williams and and William Brock racing side by side. Lagasse looked to make it three wide, thought better of it. Prudence Littlejohn back to the front as a result. The Finn, Jokey Lethanen spins off the road in that corner and Acevedo after contact with the 21 would go around. The 96 is around as well. That's Ali Nelson uh, getting caught up in an incident there with Grayson Acevedo and John Gamut. Gets things collected pretty quickly though. How about Kip Pitt? He's currently running fifth in the number 78 uh, machine. He's going for a one-stop strategy in his very first park start, which is pretty bold in itself. But uh, Kip Pitt's just one of those guys that that's not really that much of a surprise for him. He's a pretty honest, hard-working guy that just gives it his all, whether that's uh, as an owner and, uh, and car builder for the Little Johns uh, or uh, out here on the racetrack today. He's got a lot of short track experience, as I mentioned earlier. He's participated in countless hundreds, probably thousands of uh, dirt and paved oval uh, races uh, in the Pacific Northwest as well as within Canada. But uh, road courses are a little bit uh, unfamiliar to him. But uh, he's doing quite well today, showing, uh, showing that all that skills that he's mastered in uh, in the garage area have uh, paid off for him out on the racetrack despite his age and now we see a lot of the uh, the one-stop drivers coming down the pit lane the one driver that is not down the pit lane is Kyle Collins he's going for an extra lap trying to make sure he has the best tires 
for the final few laps when it's going to count the most. Here we go again. Al Lagasse has been watching the drivers around him very closely today, and he is capitalizing on every single mistake that they make. Lagasse back to the front through turns one and two, it looks like. Prudy throws it in, trying to keep it going, but Lagasse with a much better run off the corner. He's going to have it by the time we go under the hotel. Annie Thomas went for a spin a couple of laps ago, and it's as a result, fallen off the rear of Al Lagasse and Prudence Little John into the clutches of the ever consistent Kaloa Hankins. But nonetheless, Annie Thomas is the fastest car on track so far. So Annie Thomas might just yet be able to challenge for the win today. For what seems like the umpteenth time today, Kip Pitt is going to have a scary sight out the front of his windshield as Grayson Acevedo gets turns one and two all wrong and takes Matt McIntyre with him. Acevedo has really struggled on the road courses this year and uh, Calgary's not going to be an exception. Matt McIntyre as well cannot catch a break this year it seems. It's now Kyle Collins on the offensive with the fresher tires. He's going to need to make sure he gets through this slower traffic as efficiently as possible so that he can have a big lead when we get to that final stint. He just gets in front of John King up the S's and just in time it seems too as the 21 dives on the 19 into the corner. Good job by John King to keep that car in a straight line and Crass is the big loser on that one. Al Lagasse pits from the lead at the end of lap number 23. Annie Thomas in behind him, as will be many of the leaders, but not Prudence Littlejohn. She'll stay out one last lap on this set of tires so she can have the freshest ones for those most critical final laps. Henrietta Fitzwater on the one-stop strategy. John Arndt on the two-stop. John Arndt is now the moving chicane and Henrietta Fitzwater in an aggressive bid to get around the 05 gets into the side of him he was gonna she was gonna slip in behind the 05 but the 05 just had no momentum coming out of that corner and that's one of the dangers of this speed differential great battle for fourth place between Krasa and Flintstone here Krasta plans on pitting in the next lap or two, I'd imagine, but uh, Flintstone's going to try and go the rest of the way on that set of tires, but he's sure pushing it as hard as he can right now, trying to make sure he doesn't lose too much time to uh, the 21, who's still holding on and fighting with him for that spot, it looks like. 21 round the outside of the F1 car, just to come into pit, it looks like, this time by close call there with Flintstone. And uh, King pits this time by as well. Prudence Littlejohn puts the damaged machine of Max Anderson a lap down. Prudy plans on pitting this time by. And I don't think Anderson knew that because he damn near crashed into the back of her there. Al Lagasse had a two second advantage on Prudy coming into this pit cycle. Let's see where Prudy comes out. Prudence Littlejohn not even out of the speed restricted zone yet when Al Lagasse comes flying down that main straight side by side with Antivia Kingray for third position already. Al Lagasse with just a couple of cars between him and the leader Kyle Collins. It's a 17 second lead that Kyle Collins has over Al Lagasse, but there's still 11 laps to go and from here on in Kyle Collins will most certainly be slower than that 01 machine. It's only going to get worse for him as laps progress here. I think it was a bit of a slow stop for Prudence Little John there. She's now five seconds but behind Al Lagasse, and she's now pretty much fallen into the clutches of Andy Thomas and Kaloa Hankins, who are having one hell of a battle in this latter sections of the course. Touching and nearly touching several times there as the Hawaiian struggles to try and get by the Australian in the 93. Fullerton lunging in on the 9 of Zayden Davidson. I think he was looking for a cutback there, but Davidson had to check up to try and make turn number 2. And Spencer Fullerton's day goes from bad to worse there as he gets front end and rear end damage, getting overtaken by other damaged entries like Lucas Knight and James Shelley who's had his own problems in this race so far. 
Al Lagasse has not made any progress up towards the race leader, Kyle Collins. He's still trying to deal with Antivia Kingray, who despite the fact that he has six lap older tires than, than Lagasse, he is putting up one hell of a fight in the 03 machine. He felt really good about his chances. Uh, he disqualifying effort did not match that at all, however. Started this race 34th. It was v a very hyper competitive qualifying grid though. Three quarters of the field within three quarters of a second of Christian Hartone of the pole sitter. And King Ray forces the 01 out wide. He's gonna make him do it the hard way. And Legacy can't get the job done yet again. King Ray holds on to third. Without a doubt, Lagasse must be getting frustrated at this point. Every second that he spends behind King Ray is a chance for Little John to catch up. And every second that he spends behind King Ray is lessening his chances at being able to catch Collins by the end of this race. And he gives the bumper to him now. The 03, a great save by King Ray to keep that thing on the track just barely. He defended for all he was worth, but it just wasn't quite enough there. He still might have a top 10 in his hands though, depending on how conservative he is with his tires and how fast the drivers behind him end up being. Legacy may be past King Ray, but he's still making sloppy mistakes. Again, runs wide in turn 16, and there's Prudence Littlejohn, Annie Thomas, and Kaloa Hankins closing in a little bit. Still has not made next to any progress he's 16 seconds back in the three or four laps since his pit stop he's made up only a second on Collins. Hartono, King and Gambit have had their fair share of troubles each of them have spun at least once I think all of them have spun twice actually in this one but they're racing for 24th and they are giving it everything they have three wide through the S's that is crazy that they were able to make that work. King is going to end up with the position on that one, and I think it's Gambit heading into an overtake on the 24. No, the 24 is still racing him really hard. Man, battle, fun battles all over this track. Now Engelram, Krasta, and Gambit three wide for position just behind these two. It's a hard battle for 11th as well. Curtis on the brink of yet another great finish to extend his championship lead. Blake Camphausen must have gone off at some point and got some damage. That's unfortunate for him, but he's still looking at a good finish. Henrietta Fitzwater, one of the one-stoppers, losing a lot of time to these drivers uh, through the high-speed corners where she just cannot carry nearly as much speed as her rivals K cuts off Caitlin Sang pretty good there Harvey goes off and Pitt has another car spin in front of him just for good measure coming to five laps to go and Al Legacy has now caught granddad Fred Flintstone in the F1 machine he's still got 12 seconds to go to catch Kyle Collins Prudence Little John getting ever closer by the second and she's passed in TV at King Ray but what a recovery effort this will be by granddad if he's able to come home with a top five or ten finish after spinning on the first corner of the race and being last at the end of lap number one a perfectly executed slide job by Al Legacy. Fred Flintstone got back in the gas quicker though and he's up the inside of the 01 can he make a move stick on the inside I doubt it his tires are probably just worn way too much and sure enough Legacy around the outside is able to hold the F1 car at bay and now it's only clear real estate in front of him up to the back bumper of that 48 car under the hotel for the fourth to last time is Kyle Collins the race leader he still has a 10 second lead over Al Legacy the last time around and today just may be his day. Twice this year he's come very very close to winning races at Brasstown Bald in just his second start he led the most laps and was challenging Tyler Thaber for the victory only to blow an engine in the later stages of that one. At Granby in his home race he led at the white flag only to fall to the wayside of race winner Nick Pericles and again what a surprise 
Tyler Thaber in that last half mile. Today, though, he doesn't have to worry about traffic. He's got no one in front of him. He's got no one behind him in his rear view. Al Lagasse's still not really within any of these camera shots, but I'm sure it's awful lonely in that number 48 car, and he, I'm sure he's feeling every vibration as he tries to bring that thing home on what must be a ragged set of tires at this point. Three laps to go now, and Al Lagasse is finally getting himself back into a rhythm. That time by, he was two and a half seconds faster than Kyle Collins. He needs to keep doing that, and he might just have a shot at Collins in the final few seconds of this one. Prudence Littlejohn might be something Al Lagasse has to worry about, though, as Littlejohn is absolutely flying. She's dispatched of Thomas and Hankins and effectively left them in her dust, and she's now closing in on Lagasse about a second every lap. Less than four miles to go for Kyle Collins now. But Lagasse and Prudy are closing so fast on the number 48 that I'm pretty sure he's going to have to defend this one for all he's worth if he's going to go home with his first ever victory so far. He's led at the white flag before. This is his first time leading at the white flag at a road course. Kyle Collins brings it to the line. Can he hold on for just one more time? What can Al Lagasse do? He struggled with his nerves, especially getting through... The other slower traffic like Grand Ed Fr Fred Flintstone and Antivia Kingray, who he's struggled behind for more than a lap apiece. Now he's going to have only around three quarters of a lap to try and make a pass on Kyle Collins. And he's got company. Prudence Littlejohn is all over him. Al Lagasse does not have a top ten to his name. And now he's going for a win. What an upset that would be. When does Prudence make her move on Al Lagasse, though? Does she try and get by him before passing Kyle Collins? Does she try and use Kyle Collins as a pick? And what can Collins possibly do to defend against these drivers who are three or four seconds a lap faster on average? Al Lagasse looking on him on the hill. He gets to the inside of the 48. Collins drives it as hard as he can, but he puts it in the grass. And that's going to be enough for Lagasse to go around. Heartbreak for Collins. He's not going to win. Can Prudence Littlejohn get around him in time to go after Al Lagasse? He's, she's continues to lose time trying to go around the outside of him, but she's got him cleared. Lagasse with a five car length lead. Can Littlejohn draft him down this long straightaway? Lagasse struggled with this set of corners in the last few laps. He's taking it really conservatively. He doesn't need anything special. And my God, he's got it. What an upset here at Calgary Speed Park. Al Lagasse, who's never had a finish better than 13th in his, in, in his entire career, is going to bring it to the line. He wins round number 14, race two at Calgary Speed Park. Prudence Littlejohn gave it all that she had, but will come home Second, what a run in front of her team's home crowd, though. I'm sure Kit Pitt was watching the scoreboard there from where he was on track. Kit Pitt brought it home 18th. By the way, not too shabby for an old guy in his first ever Hark start. Heartbreaking, though, for Kyle Collins, though. Nothing short of gut-wrenching, I'm sure, to come to the line for the white flag yet again and be robbed of it in the final few corners. What a run by Sylvain Lasavage to drive past Thomas and Hankins up to fourth spot by the end there. Turns out his strategy of pitting quite late on and then having fresh tires for the last two stints worked out in the end. Annie Thomas and Kaloa Hankins battled it for that top five all day. It would be Thomas getting it in the end. Hankins, good consistent sixth place run. Sam Curtis, despite spinning earlier on in this race, uh, quietly finished 7th. Granddad Fl Fred Flintstone recovered to 8th place after falling to last on the start, spinning in the first corner. Insane job by him. And Tevia Kingray up 25 spots from her starting spot. Impressive with the difficulty in passing here and uh, a testament to how well she worked the tire strat. And DJ Curtis sneaks into the top 10. Yet another quiet effort by him will give him a large points lead. 
Bejenov keeps second in the points, but he's now almost a full round back of Curtis. Engelram and Johnson keep third and fourth. Sang climbs to fifth in points. Mark Hankins, though, up to sixth place in, po in the point standings. Probably one of the least talked about drivers on the grid, but he's made himself in the title hunt somehow. Harvey fell to seventh in the standings. Pericles maintains eighth. And Dodd and Prudence Littlejohn jump into the top ten. There was a change at the bottom of the standings as well. Tony Tavolaris' top 10 propelled him over Jack Lagacy to finally give someone else the Dunst Torch. Next time out, Hark heads to Fontana, California for the final one-off event at the longest and one of the fastest tracks on the calendar.